and welcome to Celebrity Mastermind with me, John Humphreys. In the spotlight tonight are ah, John Colshaw, the great impressionist from Dead Ringers, I hate him. He'll be answering questions on Doctor Who, the John Pertwee years. Richie Anderson from the Radio 2 Breakfast Show, who'll be answering questions on the pop group The Saturdays. Rachel Johnson, one of Britain's most versatile journalists, whose subject is the Laconia incident. And Dennis Lawson, the actor who's best known for Star Wars, his subject, the early life of Miles Davis. Now, this is the ultimate test of what they think they know, what they should know, and what they do know. It's not always the same by any means, but the rules are unchanged. One round on their specialist subject, and then one on general knowledge. And a rather nice trophy, and more importantly, the honour, the huge honour, of becoming a celebrity mastermind. So, let's ask our first contender to join us, please. And your name is? John Colshaw. Your occupation? Voice actor and impressionist. Your chosen charity? The Royal Society for Blind Children. And your chosen subject? Doctor Who and the John Pertwee years. A third Doctor's adventures in time and space. Here we go in 90 seconds. In Pertwee's first Doctor Who story, Spearhead from Space, in 1970, he battles a race of telepathic aliens who can bring shop dummies to life. What's the name of the alien race? The Nestines. Yeah. In which story does the Doctor stop the destruction of Earth by an experimental drilling project? He experiences the potentially disastrous impact of the drilling firsthand when he's accidentally transported into a parallel universe. Inferno. Yep. In The Demons, the Doctor presents a slideshow of various mythical deities. What physical feature is common to them all? Horns. Yep. The Doctor and his assistant Joe Grant are held captive by resistance fighters from the 22nd century in Day of the Daleks. The Doctor speaks to Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart on the phone and assures him everything's fine, but then uses an old-fashioned phrase that implies he's lying. What phrase? Don't forget to tell it to the Marines. Yes, in which John Pertwee story, written by Robert Holmes, is the Doctor's home planet named as Gallifrey for the first time. The story also features the first on-screen appearance of the Sontarans. The Time Warrior. Yep. What's the name of the terrifying creatures that attack the Doctor and Joe inside the Miniscope, a futuristic peep show containing miniaturised life forms in Carnival of Monsters? The Drashigs. Yeah. At the end of the Three Doctors, the Time Lords reward Pertwee's Doctor by restoring his knowledge of time travel and giving him a brand new component for his TARDIS. What component? A dematerialisation circuit. Indeed. In Pertwee's final regular story, Planet of the Spiders, in 74, the handyman at a Buddhist meditation centre, who's played by John Kane, tries to protect protect the Doctor and his companion, Sarah Jane Smith, from the spider-controlled residence. What's his name? Tommy. Correct. No passes and you've got them all right. Eight points. <laughs> and our next contender, please. And your name is? Richie Anderson. Your occupation? TV and radio presenter. Your chosen charity? The Midlands Air Ambulance. And your chosen subject? The Saturdays. The chart-topping band formed in 2007. Here we go. Frankie Sanford, Molly King, Una Healy, Rochelle Wiseman and Vanessa White released their first single as The Saturdays in July 2008, but before that they toured with another girl group as their supporting act on their Tangled Up tour. Which group? Girls Allowed. Yep. The band's platinum-selling debut album, Chasing Lights, was released in 2008 after they'd signed to a UK-based record label, which is a subsidiary of Polydor. What label? Fascination. Yep. And what's the title of the single by the Saturdays, which reached number five in 2013 and includes the lyrics, You take me back in time to 1979, we'll be at the Bee Gees, baby, everybody staying alive. Disco love. Yes, in 2009, the Saturdays appeared in an episode of the BBC Two drama series, Myths, in which Greek legends were given a modern twist. What did the band call themselves in the episode? The Sundays? The Sirens. Before they joined the Saturdays, Frankie and Rochelle were members of the teen band S Club Juniors, later known as S Club 8. Their debut single reached number two in the UK in 2002. What's the title of the single? One Step Closer. Yep. In 2009, the band embarked on their debut nationwide tour, which kicked off at the Clyde Auditorium in Glasgow. What was the name of the tour? Um, <sighs> work. Yes. On the cover of the album, Living for the Weekend, the Saturdays are all depicted in black outfits and high-heeled shoes. Four members of the group are wearing dresses. Who's the only one wearing trousers? Um, 
Frankie. Una, the Saturday's 2010 EP headlines includes a song entitled Higher, which was remixed and then released by the band as a single in August that year. It features an American rapper who previously topped the UK chart as part of various collaborations. What's his name? Flo Rida. Is correct. Richie, no passes. You have scored six points. <laughs> And our next contender, please. And your name is? Rachel Johnson. Your occupation? Author and broadcaster. Your chosen charity? Parkinson's UK. And your chosen subject? The Laconia Incident. The British ship sunk by a U-boat which rescued the survivors but was then bombed by an American aircraft. Here we go. Most of those on board the Laconia when she was sunk were prisoners of war. There were about 1,800 of them. What was their nationality? Italian. Yep. The Laconia began her ill-fated final voyage in August 1942 when she left a port at the southern end of the Suez Canal and sailed down the east coast of Africa to Cape Town. What was the name of the port? Port Tufik. Yep. The Laconia left Cape Town on September the 1st, 1942 and was torpedoed 11 days later off the west coast of Africa. The German U-boat responsible was a Type IXC long-range attack submarine. What was its alphanumeric designation? Don't know. Pass. After the attack, the crew of U-156 began to rescue the survivors and its captain radioed an uncoded message that said, if any ship will assist the shipwrecked Laconia crew, I will not attack her, provided I am not attacked by ship or aircraft. What was that captain's name? Werner Hartenstein. Yep. The Laconia was sunk in the South Atlantic, northeast of Ascension Island, where the American Air Force had a secret base. On September the 16th, a B-24 bomber took off from the airfield there and attacked U-156. What was the name of the airfield? Wide awake. Yep. U-156 was attacked by the American bomber even though the submarine was clearly displaying a homemade white flag with an emblem on it. What emblem? Red Cross. Yep. After the bombing of U-156, the submarine dived to avoid further attack and so abandoned the survivors it had rescued. What was the name of the American commanding officer who had ordered the aircraft's crew to sink the sub? Robert Richardson. Yes. In the aftermath of the Allied attack on U-156, the commander of the U-boat fleets issued the so-called Laconia Order, which forbade U-boat crews from assisting survivors. What was the name of the commander? Dunnitz. It was indeed Carl Dernitz. One pass, Rachel. U-156 was the alpha numeric designation. You have scored seven points. Thank you. And our final contender, please. And your name is? Dennis Lawson. Your occupation? Actor. Chosen charity? Children's hospices across Scotland. And your chosen subject? The early life of Miles Davis. Influential, brilliant jazz trumpeter and composer. Here we go. Davis moved to New York in 1944 to go to music school, but was torn between his studies and his desire to play in jazz clubs at night. The following year, he dropped out to become a full-time jazz musician. What's the name of the school? Juilliard School. Yep. The jazz musician Clark Terry was an early mentor. Davis once said, I started to play like him. I idolised him. He also used the same make of trumpet but mouthpieces, Terry, named after a German trumpet player. What was it called? The Mouthpiece to Heim. Yes. The Miles Davis Band, a group of nine musicians, was formed in 1948, but it wasn't until 1957 that all their instrumental tracks appeared together on a 12-inch album. What's the title of that album? Birth of the Cool. Yep. When Davis was at high school, he received regular trumpet lessons from one of his father's dental patients who instructed him to play without vibrato so that he didn't sound like all the white trumpet players. What was the teacher's name? Elwood Buchanan. Yep. In 1949, Davis went to France to perform at the Paris Jazz Festival and he began an affair with a young singer. She introduced him to the philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre, who suggested that the couple get married. What was her name? Juliette Greco. Yes. In early 1957, Davis sacked two of his band members for their erratic behaviour. One was his drummer, Philly Joe Jones, which saxophonist was the other? Charlie Parker. John Coltrane. Davis created an improvised score for the 1958 film Lift to the Scaffold. It was the debut feature film of a young French director who was a big fan of Davis's work. Which director? Louis Mal. 
Yep. The 1959 album Kind of Blue is widely regarded as one of the most influential albums in jazz music. On the first day in studio, Davis's new piano player, Winton Kelly, arrived to find that Davis had invited another pianist to the sessions. What was his name? Bill Evans. Correct. No passes, Dennis. You have scored seven points. Thank you. <laughs> Well, what a brilliant specialist subject round. So close. Let's have a look at all the scores. In fourth place with six points, Richie. Joint second place, seven points apiece, Rachel and Dennis. First place, eight points, John. So now it is the general knowledge round. And if there's a tie at the end of it, then the number of passes is taken into account and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they're tied on passes as well, there has to be a tie break. So let's ask Richie to join us back in the chair, please. This is the bit that kept me up last night, well, waking up in cold sweats. Would you mind me describing you as a sidekick? No, I Because like you do that. the travel on Zoe Ball's show and on Ken Bruce's show. I feel like I've got a really important job on both shows because it's my job to ensure that the traffic and travel moves around Great Britain. And I feel like that's a big thing because the worst thing for anybody, they get up in the morning, they get in their car, they're sitting there for hours on end, but... I can give you all the shortcuts, I can make sure you're not late for anything, I can tell you where to avoid. But do you know what, you say that about being the psychic. I'm doing my own show, so it's Richie Anderson's Boy Bands versus Girl Bands, and I am a girl band and boy band connoisseur. So I'm doing a three-hour show of girl bands and boy bands, and it's kind of like me being a teenager again in my bedroom when I dance along to everything, sing along to everything. And I guarantee you, John, if you listen on BBC Sounds, I'll have you standing up doing the Westlife air grab. The Westlife <laughs> air grab. Try it, the Westlife air grab. <laughs> I've never done an air grab on television before, or indeed anywhere. So when you're lip-syncing along, don't you do the mm. air grabs? I'm afraid you can't lip-sync to Bach. <laughs> anyway, good luck with the new show. Thank you. And uh, good luck with your general knowledge round. You have two minutes. <laughs> Here we go. Which famous comet was last visible from Earth in 1986 is next due to reappear in 2061? The star. Ali's Comet. What word for a person who comes from or lives on Tyneside in the northeast of England is a diminutive of the first name George? Geordie. Yes. What word for a large waterfall is also the name of a medical condition in which the eyesight is adversely affected by the development of cloudy patches over the lens? Uh, Niagara. A cataract. Which hugely influential American singer was born Robert Allen Zimmerman in Duluth, Minnesota in 1941? Uh, Stevie Wonder. Bob Dylan. The name Sheltie is applied to a breed of sheepdog that originated on a group of Scottish islands north of mainland Britain. Which islands? Uh, Shetland. Yes. In a 1994 film, Jim Carrey plays a so-called pet detective. What's the name of this character? Ace Ventura. Yep. The national flag of China features a large yellow star with an arc of smaller yellow stars all on a red background. How many smaller stars are there in the arc? Four. Yes. Which English explorer and adventurer was executed in 1618 after a failed attempt to find gold in Spanish-controlled South America? He'd Pass. been knighted by Elizabeth I in 1585. Pass. A stage musical adaptation of a 1968 film about a flying car ran in the West End for almost three and a half years from 2002 and starred Michael Ball as Caractacus Potts. What was the title of the musical? Was it Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? It was. What's the name of the small rubber disc used in ice hockey instead of a ball? A putt. A puck. A former leader of the Conservative Party who was knighted in the 2020 New Year's Honours list is often referred to in the media by his initials IDS. What's his name? Ian Duncan Smith. Yep. Since the mid-19th century, one British daily newspaper has been nicknamed The Thunderer. Which one? The Sun. The Times. What's the name of the title character of the 1831 novel The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo? Um. Oh, what's it called? Quasimodo? Yes. Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks were executive producers of a 2001 television miniseries that followed a unit of elite American paratroops known as Easy Company during the Second World War. What is the title of the series? Um... Extras? Band of Brothers. Close. One pass, that English explorer who was knighted by Elizabeth I and was executed, Walter Raleigh. OK. You have, though, a total, Richie, of 13 points. Oh, wow. <laughs> Is you next. <laughs> and now, Rachel, again, please.
Rachel, you will be, I can safely guarantee this, fed up to the back teeth with being introduced as and asked questions about Boris Johnson because you're his sister. Is that a blessing or is it a curse? It is definitely a blessing. He's a wonderful brother. But you are a journalist and being a journalist um, is, is a demanding job in all sorts of strange ways. Very. I mean, I feel I should be coming up with some bants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, I've moved into radio, so tanks on your old lawn and your lawn. It's talk radio, so they like opinion. So what basically happens is people ring up and shout at you, which I quite enjoy. I'm quite used to it. Is there an argument, though, that says we in this country should be more respectful of politicians I think there in is. general? I think that being a politician is a really tough job. Of course, criticise someone's policies, criticise their speeches, criticise their performance, their record. But I think personal attacks have gone too far. But can't you take the view it's like that... It's past eight on the Today programme. <laughs> and I am a nervous shred. <laughs> on the contrary. Anyway, general knowledge. Right. Two minutes, starting now. What is the name of the patron saint of Ireland whose feast day is observed Patrick. on March the 17th? St. Patrick, yes. What Patrick. name is given to the wafer-like biscuit, often presented after a meal in a Chinese restaurant, especially in America? It contains a printed prediction about the recipient's future. Fortune cookie. Yep, many species of the plant genus Urtica are covered with tiny hairs that cause a painful sting. What's the common name for these plants? Nettles. Yep, in 2017, Gregor Townsend was appointed as head coach for the rugby union team of one of the home nations of the UK. Which one? Wales. Scotland. What word can mean discarded rubbish or a group of animals born to the same mother during a single birth? Litter. Yeah. Hot sausage and mustard and cold jelly and custard are two dishes mentioned in the lyrics of a song from the musical Oliver. Which song? My favourite things. Food, glorious food. In April 2020, Forbes published its annual list of global billionaires. Which online shopping entrepreneur topped the list for the third consecutive year with an estimated fortune of $113 billion? Jeff Bezos. Yeah. In the 1880s, a French chemist and microbiologist developed effective vaccines against both anthrax and rabies. What was his name? Louis Pasteur? Yep, a series of action films based on a team of Marvel comic superheroes as installments that are subtitled Age of Ultron, Infinity Wars and Endgame. What series? Pass. What famous Australian landmark stands at the tip of a headland called Benelong Point in Sydney? Ayers Rock. Sydney Opera House. Which American singer wrote the hit single I'm a Believer for the Monkees? His later solo hit singles include Cracklin' Rosie and Song Sung Blue. Neil Diamond? Yes. In Slavic language such as Russian, the surname of Boris Pasternak, the author of Dr. Zhivago, is a word for a cream-coloured root vegetable. Which one? Beetroot. Pass it. In New York City, Brooklyn Bridge, which connects the boroughs of Manhattan, and Brooklyn spans which river? Hudson. East River. The television talent show The Search began in September 2020 with the aim of finding a support act for the forthcoming tour of which pop group? Pass. Time is up. You had two passes, Rachel. A Little Mix was that pop group. And that series of action films based on the Marvel comic superheroes, etc. The Avengers. You have a total now, Rachel, of 14 points. Thank you. You did well. And now, Dennis Lawson again, please. And Dennis, John. looking at your extraordinary career, Merchant of Venice with Laurence Olivier, Bert Lancaster with yeah. Local Hero, yeah. and then both editions, as it were, of Star Wars. I've been around, I've done some stuff, John, definitely. You for have? Sure, for sure. And the craft of acting, uh -huh. how has it changed? Both of those men, uh, they're very interesting to bring them up because they're both very different in their backgrounds, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I was very young when I worked with Olivier, uh, on The Merchant of Venice. He has this phrase, a Shakespearean phrase. He called me a gormandizer. You're a huge gormandizer. One day I said to him, what does that mean, by the way, a gormandizer? And he said, it's a glutton, a huge feeder. And then that night I went home and I thought, that is appalling. <laughs> As an actor, I didn't know what he was saying to me. So from then on, I always had a dictionary by my script. Any word I wasn't sure about, from that moment on, I always looked it up. And working with Lancaster, that was fascinating, too, in a very different way. The way he approached the camera. He knew what the camera was doing. 
He knew what he was doing in the lens, in the shot. And that was fascinating to watch. But I bet most people, when they come up to you in the street, they say, oh, Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars. And that was just so accidental, all that, uh, getting into that. We were all just a bunch of young actors. We had no idea what we were involved with at all. And I remember watching the first kind of preview of it and screen, and that ship went across the top of the camera, that extraordinary uh, shot, and uh, you went, this is incredible. No. General knowledge. That, we yeah, have two fine, minutes yes. of go questions on then, go on. coming up now. Brother. What animal has been let out of the bag in an informal phrase that means a secret has been revealed? Cat. Yep. The sieges of Mafeking, Kimberley and Ladysmith between 1899 and 1900 were engagements in a war sometimes known as the South African War or the Second War of Independence. What's the usual name of this the war? Boer War. Yep. What common thick creamy sauce or dressing made from emulsified egg yolks mixed with oil is used in coleslaw? Pass. When it's written in digits, the number one million has how many zeros? Six. Yes. What's the name of the test cricket venue in Birmingham that's also the home ground of Warwickshire County Cricket Club? Pass. What name from Japanese words for picture and character is given to the pictorial images of faces, objects and symbols often used as sign-offs in mobile phone communications? They were devised in Japan in the late 1990s. Emojis. Yeah. Which American rock group had top ten singles in the UK with Gimme All Your Lovin' in 1984 to cover of Elvis Presley's hit Viva Las Vegas in 1992? Pass. The bone shaker, which had wheels with wooden spokes and metal rims, was an early version of what form of transport? Bicycle. Yep. The national emblem of the United States is a species of eagle whose common name wrongly suggests that it has no plumage. Bald what species? Bald eagle. Yes, bald eagle. Which character in the Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis is sometimes referred to as the son of the great emperor beyond the sea? Pass. What island country in the Persian Gulf is connected to Saudi Arabia by the King Fahd Causeway? Pass. Kate Mulgrew, Laverne Cox and Uzo Aduba have all been nominated for an Emmy Award for their performances in an American television drama series set in a prison. What series? Orange. Is the new black. In August 2020, which politician beat Leila Moran in the election to become leader of the Liberal Democrats? Pass. The book entitled The Anatomy of the Horse, published in 1766, was written by a British artist best known for his paintings of horses. Which artist? Pass. Which vitamin that occurs naturally in two forms is essential for blood to clot properly? A pass. Well, I can <laughs> tell you. It's vitamin K. Your other pass is George Stubbs, yeah, the great yeah. horse painter. Ed Davey, again, leader of the Lib Dems. Bahrain is connected to Saudi Arabia by that causeway. Aslan is the character in the Chronicles of Narnia. ZZ Top, the American rock group. Edge Baston is the cricket venue. And mayonnaise, the thick, yes, creamy mayo, sauce. Mayo. You have now, Dennis. 13 points. Thank you. Well done. Well done. And finally, John, again, please. And, uh, John, I have to apologise for saying I hate you at the start. I, I no. don't, of course. But the thing is, when you do me, I don't recognise myself. I mean... What have you got against me personally? Oh, nothing at all, nothing <laughs> at all. Every Dead Ringers episode will usually start with the Today programme sketch and your presenting style is a great foundation for the sketch and the entire show, especially when it gets to that fever pitch part where you're asking the questions and no, 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 you're not going to get away with that. We're taking the caricatures, taking certain bits and you know, stretching them, as my, uh, my, my chief political advisor would uh, no <laughs> doubt have you here, uh, agree. Yeah, who's the easiest to do? Well, I mean, apart from Boris Johnson. I think the Donald has been very easy over a lot of years. You know, the hand gestures, like you're having a game of darts, but you're not trying very hard. Who are your favourites? I think it's the ones that stay with you for many years. Patrick Moore was the first person that I ever did when uh. I was very, very young, so <laughs> he would certainly be a favourite. <laughs> I think at the moment John Bishop is a great one because he's very likeable and his style is un. Mistakeable. Like that, he's got a great... You tend to do the characters you like. But do you have a single favourite, though? Such a tough question. I suppose I might say Tony Blair. Many years taking off Tony Blair. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. That was the entire sort of Dead Ringer series on TV. Being a great impressionist, there is always something to do. The material and the characters never ends. <laughs> right, now, the big test for you, John. 14 is the score to beat. And Rachel will be watching very carefully. Here we go. 
In the annual health campaign known as Movember, launched in Australia in 2003, men are encouraged to grow what form of facial adornment? A moustache. Yeah. The Scotland Yard detective Leonard Nipper Reed is best known for his arrest of a notorious pair of criminal brothers in 1968. What was their surname? Birkenhair. Cray. Which chess piece is also known as a castle? A uh, knight. A rook. What road safety device was invented by Percy Shaw in 1934? The idea came to him when he was driving through fog and was struggling to see the road in front of him. Cat's eyes. Yep. In a series of comedy films released in the 1990s and 2000s, Mike Myers plays the title character, a secret agent who is a parody of fictional spies such as James Bond. What's the character's name? Austin Powers. Yes. The Royal Armouries Museum is in a city in northern England. Which one? Newcastle. Leeds. In the abbreviation PM, which means after midday, the letter M stands for Meridian. What does letter P stand Post. for? Post. Yes. A well-known Italian fashion house founded in Milan in 1913 became known for its black nylon handbags with gold chain straps and a triangular logo. Which fashion house? Gucci. Prada. The Irish singer Paul Hewson co-founded the rock group that in 1978 became U2. He's better known by what name? Bono. Yes. A new 12-sided coin was introduced into circulation by the Royal Mint in March 2017. What denomination is it? Five pounds. One pound. Which author wrote the novel The Stud? It was adapted into a 1978 film that starred Oliver Tobias and the author's sister, Joan. Jenny Cooper? Jackie Collins. In astronomy, which constellation is sometimes known as the goat? It's also one of the 12 signs of the zodiac in astrology. Aries. Capricorn. At the age of just 10 in 2000, Michelle Wee became the youngest player to qualify for a US Women's Amateur Championship in which sport? Tennis. Golf. In geometry, a reflex angle is one that is less than 360 degrees, but greater than how many degrees? 90 degrees. 180. What French word which translates as melting is used in English for a thick paste made from sugar and water? The mixture is often used as the soft centre of sweets and to ice or decorate cakes. Fondue. Fondant. And that's a shame, no. well, from your perspective, because you now have, John, 13 points. <laughs> Oof, that was close. <laughs> Let's have a look at the final scores. In joint second place, 13 points apiece, John, Richie and Dennis. In first place, she squeaked it. 14 points, Rachel, which means she takes home the trophy and is tonight's celebrity mastermind. What an honour, Rachel. Well, I'm very surprised and I think all these three were brilliant and I, was, I have robbed them. It was close and that's what we like to see. Now, you don't have to be a celebrity to take part in the regular Mastermind programme. If you would like to appear in the next series on BBC Two, you can apply online at bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind. And you can follow us at Mastermind Quiz. Either way, do join us again next time for more Masterminds. And thanks for watching. Goodbye. This is going next to my Celebrity Pointless trophy, which are my two main achievements in life, are winning Celebrity Pointless and now Celebrity Mastermind.